Hello. Hello again. My name is Lev Nilik. I'm a simple Jew. And uh, this is a second recording of our summarization for the um, uh, our discussion group that we recently started in Atlanta, discussion forum that we'll call discussion group number seven. Otherwise, it's referred to as a, um, a group on Midot, uh, the soul therapy, based on a book that we're learning by Rab uh, Moshe Don Kestenbaum, the book called Olam Hamidot. We started as a group, and we uh, have about three sessions only, and my previous recording, I did it... Uh, uh, last week, and uh, we're trying to, as I mentioned last time, we didn't want to record the class because some people wanted to record it, and some people felt uncomfortable with re recording, so I decided, we decided, um, well, people mentioned, why don't I have to record what I think about our meetings and bring it out as a uh, free format uh, disc background, and we can build on and discuss that during our meeting. So, we're now on page 33 of... Uh, Rav's uh, Kestenbaum book, Olam Hamidot, World of Midot. Uh, we are at the section Beyond Human Intellect. And uh, again, uh, disclaimer being uh, me being a simple Jew, I'm Lev Nelik, the simple Jew. I don't even know how to translate the word uh, kolel. I don't know in which year Shuhana Ruk was published. I don't exactly know how volumes are there in Shas and Talmud. I do know the Torah has five books of Moshe, but I don't know exactly the extent of Kabbalah, the no extent of um, how many Amos to go behind, beyond the boundary uh, on Shabbos, uh, and not even sure that if it's 2,000 Amot, how to convert it into inches or miles. So, I don't know a lot of things. And in our group that we have, we also have a lot of people, we have people that also don't know a lot of things about our background, about Judaism, about the world. And we have our, our kind of aches and pains, and we have our expectations and thoughts and questions, and we just try to define who we are. And we are, um, some of them, some of us younger, some a little bit older, but still we are naive and childish, and we are very open, and we are not afraid in our group settings to discuss things that bother us. One thing we found that we don't really know what bothers us. So, for example, the last session, last time, we talked about measuring midah. The word midah is a measure. How do we measure that measure? And uh, one of the points in the book says, if we love others because that is our nature, my nature, just love people. Or for some other reason, it is not considered a fulfillment of the mitzvah. Oh, was a lot of disagreement in, the, in our discussion class. And uh, those people who disagreed also disagreed with people who disagreed with people who were disagreeing. So we had some confusion. It says also in the book, one does not possess good midos, says Orchot Tzadikim, cannot be, uh, cannot be in possession, one who does not possess good bindos cannot be in possession of Torah and mitzvahs either, since the entire Torah depends on rectifying one's mitzvahs. Now we came to a conclusion, kind of we're coming to a conclusion that when uh, people ask questions, last time we mentioned why we exist here. Well, we exist to learn Torah. What does it mean? Why? For Torah's sake. Even it's not lishma, it's still good. Well, the book seems to tell us that the purpose of learning Torah is basically to apply it to our life. We on earth, not angels, we want to behave with people good. Not angelically, but humanely. And the Torah is mechanism. And some people say that, well, you know, the Haredim, not exactly sure how to translate the word Haredim is it. But Haredi would say, some people would claim that if you learn Torah, just learn and learn and sit. And if you read so many pages of Sassan Hendrin and Baba Mitzia and other ones, eventually it will it'll polish your middle. It will happen. That's a ro ra road to a good life, to a good human life. It will happen. 
Some people say, I don't know, it might take me 300 years to get there. I would like to treat my neighbor and the lady that wants to cross the street today, not after I have finished Shah seven times. Is a, is a sign that probably, probably has a point, and uh, that's a point we want to understand. So a couple of examples. The best thing to illustrate uh, life is by example. So people said, what exactly is our problem? Why we don't like certain things? Why some things annoy us? Um, do we have to work on our windows not to be impatient, to be patient, to wait for people, to give people benefit of the doubt, to give people a break? What exactly is the ultimate bottom line of the learning and applying windows? So I wrote myself a couple of the key notes here. One is, for example, well, what is it I don't like? I come to the shul and with Davin, and there's somebody sitting next to me, Davin slowly. Baruch very much into it, very much pour his heart out to Hashem. But the guy next to him can't concentrate because the guy's mumbling all over the place. Should I mention something to a rabbi? Is it my problem? I cannot focus enough on Hashem and people bothering me. It is, should I go to a psychiatrist to explain, to explain to him my issue? And he'll say, just put your praying shawl over and don't pay attention. Well, which one is Midos? To not notice that, not to pay attention to that. Do we criticize people for doing it because we just don't like them? And that's just our expression of disapproval that guys went to yeshiva for dozens of years and now they still don't understand that if I just keep praying and shaking the desk, praying with my hand, that the guy next to me might be disturbed and may not be <laughs> very nice. I just me don't feel into that. Another example, uh, well, after our class last time, the guys that were with us, uh, we had some doctors and uh, I had some issue medically, it's just a minor issue, and I asked him, you know, as a guy after this class, yeah, well, what do you think, I have a pain here, a shoulder, or something like that. The person stayed for 10, 15 minutes and just politely, actually, very helpful. Yeah, it's good to be done. Or how many times we can come to shul and pray and pray and pray, and then the way out, you ask somebody, listen, uh, you know, I come hyper hypochondriac, everything bothers me, what do you think, yeah, yeah I gotta go, I gotta go, no have time. Well, You've been praying 45 minutes, and now you don't have three minutes to answer the person's question. I guess I have to make an appointment, take a number, to be seen by the doctor to tell, so that he can tell me that, don't worry about it. Just do a massage and put some hot compress, and everything will be fine. All right. Is that me, done? Another example. Uh, another example. For example... Uh, Let's say there's a seum. Somebody making seum. Hey guys, will be seum, and that's in uh, in uh, memory to of my father or grandfather or mother or somebody. And I'm making seum, and everybody's invited. So we we'll come to see you, and it's so nice to sit there to be with the person when he is pouring his or her heart out. Um, I guess I shouldn't say her seum because a lady is not supposed to study Talmud. Oh, I was supposed to say that. All right, so let's say he made the seum, and uh, and you go to the restroom on the way out, and you see a couple of guys sitting in the ne next room and studying Torah. Torah, studying, studying, studying. Why studying Torah? Well, very important, because we study Torah. Well, but the person next door is doing seum for his father, or for his grandfather. Should you come to honor this guy, and maybe not? Study Torah for a little bit, for, for many 20 minutes? Is it my job? Is it my responsibility to bring it up? Is it his responsibility to be sensitive to understand that? Or be seeing is not that important? Maybe studying Torah? Listen, I have a schedule at this time. I have a Torah lesson. I can't miss it. Sorry. Maybe you should miss it. So how does it fit the human psyche, human morality, you don't fit into how do you decide what's right? When do you forego Torah study? Maybe that's why Rabbi Kestenbaum is saying that Torah can be poison. Maybe that's him calling. So we're going to put it on hold, good windows, not to interrupt when you're talking to people. So I just put the phone down. So back to this situation, how do you decide 
when you have to stop. Maybe that's what he was saying, that um, vote to those who occupy themselves with the study of Torah, yet lack fear of heaven. Fear of Hashem. What's fear of heaven? Not to go to person to see you? Is it like a fear of heaven? Because you're too busy? Not because you have to go shopping or uh, write a report for your work because you have to go to Torah. And I mean, I two more pages of Talmud and I'll be way ahead. That have... Maybe that's why it says that the Torah is life-giving medicine for people, but if they're not deserving, it becomes a drug of death. So which one of this is a <laughs> right behavior? Is what I'm saying now is uh, inappropriate? Am I too blunt? I didn't mention any names, just arbitrarily examples, perhaps fictitious examples. I was coming from a family member the other day, a uh, very close family member, to help me with some, some work. And uh, the person helped me, my, my dearest family member, and uh, helped me. And then I wanted to get a little bit more help. And uh, Sorry, like, this is the news. I need to watch the news. Okay. Thank you anyway. As I was working out, I was thinking to myself, well, it's kind of nice for them not to help me. I needed help. It's very important. It was critical. It was late in the evening, actually. I imposed on them a little bit because they had to eat their dinner and watch TV and do this and that. So, but then they helped me. They helped me. But not as much help as I wish they did. As they're walking down back home, I was thinking, why am I feeling this way? Am I ungrateful? Well, they helped me what they could. Okay, don't judge. They just couldn't help me, but... Why didn't they help me a little bit more? I, can't, I asked for a little bit more help. A lot more help, perhaps. Well, don't judge. You got help. Don't worry about it. Next time, they help you more. That's another example that I can't reconcile in my head how to assess that. Am I, am I feeling inappropriate? Am I feeling jealousy, resentment? Uh, am I trying to teach some lesson? Should I mention something, maybe politely? Obviously not impolitely, but how do you handle situations like that? Well, that's what we're going to cover in the next class. In the next class, we'll go on from page 32 of the book, actually 33, which is beyond human intellect. That is certainly beyond mine. And we're going to cover page and a half, and to the, a person is shaped by his actions. It talks about people acting against, the person acts against his nature. What does it mean? What is your nature? How do you act against your nature? That's the next class. It will be on Sunday. This coming Sunday at 9 o'clock at the shul. And uh, like we said, everyone is welcome. Uh, we have, of course, uh, the rule, only rule that members and non-members only. So look forward for those in class next Sunday at 9 o'clock. Today is Wednesday. So what are you supposed to say? Shabbat Shalom, right? Wednesday and on Shabbat Shalom. Sunday until Wednesday, Shavuot Tov. That's learning Torah.